happy Friday, everyone, and welcome to another episode of ILLN Opinion Plus, a series airing on Fridays. This is a space for our opinions, where we talk about current events and questions the Latino community is curious about. Today, we're joined by Claudia Silva Hernandez, who's running for Cook County Circuit Judge. Welcome, Claudia. Thank you for joining us this week. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. So, Claudia, it seems like your Mexican heritage is very important to you. You've taught Latin American studies at Martin College over in Cicero, and your website is completely bilingual, which not every candidate does. So can you tell me a little bit about that? Sure. Um, So as you stated, my name is Claudia Silva Hernandez. Um, My parents are immigrants from Mexico. Um, They immigrated from San Luis Potosí, Mexico, back in the 1970s. Um, and yeah, I've been really into Latino culture, Latino history. Um, I'm a graduate of the University of Illinois at Chicago. Um, and that's really the first time I came in, in contact with, unfortunately, with um, professors or educators who really took an interest in me or who really cared about me. Um, and it was all my Latino professors that I had there and Latina professors who really were a big influence in me. Um, so I've always been um, really proud of my culture and of my background. And so that's why I thought it was really important to have my website completely bilingual, um, to recognize that there are um, plenty of individuals who who live in the state of Illinois or Cook County who um, perhaps are not as dominant in English and to give them access to information um, about voting and about who I am as a candidate. So it was important for you to be inclusive. Yes, thank you. So I have to ask you like the million dollar question, why do you want to be a judge? I really want to be a judge um, because I've had over 15 years of legal experience um, and I've really focused on working in areas where I could really help other people um, and connect with other people. Uh, Growing up, I grew up in in Dalton and uh, Flossmoor, South Suburbs. Um, I wasn't exposed to a lot of uh, Latino um, classmates or there wasn't a lot of Latino children living in my neighborhood. So um, I was tracked a lot in kindergarten through 12th grade because of being bilingual and being quiet and shy. My teachers thought I didn't know how to speak English. Um, And so I really um, kind of felt invisible, which I kind of alluded to um, when I talked about going to UIC and being the first time that I encountered educators who really took an interest in me. So that's really one of my driving forces for wanting to be a judge is I want to make people feel visible I know what it's like to feel marginalized or scared or to feel out of place. And I think a lot of um, litigants who come to our courtrooms these days definitely feel like the cards are stacked up against them, like they don't have a fair shot or that the people sitting in in positions of power, such as judges, um, don't mirror their community and don't um, identify with their community or are out of touch. And I'm definitely someone who um, is in touch with Uh, different communities. And that's really why I want to be a judge is to not only rule with fairness, but also be someone um, that people can look up to and be a story for people to see that I I, um, overcame many obstacles to end up where I am today. Um, And um, just to be a role model for people. So now you've held a lot of positions um, locally. So you've held positions with the Chicago Housing Authority, the Will County Public Defender, and the Independent Police Review Authority, among so many others. Which role do you think has prepared you the most to take on the role as judge? That's a great question. I think that they've all um, helped me. Like I said, I've really tried to uh, purposely take positions where I would be helping other people. So, For example, when I was at the Attorney Registration Disciplinary Commission, um, that's an agency that regulates all the attorneys in the state of Illinois. Um, And so my role there was to review complaints that citizens had about attorneys and address them and prosecute cases if they had to be prosecuted. So for example, some cases that we would have would be attorneys who would take retainer fees from clients and then um, never show up in court or never do anything on the case and the clients would lose their money. And so um, the attorney would disappear or it would be hard for them to communicate with them. Um, So we would prosecute those kind of cases. Um, I also most recently worked at the um, state of Illinois as an administrative law judge with the Department of Human Services. And I really enjoyed that experience. There I was mainly helping appellants uh, who were appealing cases that dealt with um, getting access to food stamps, 
medical benefits, child care benefits, uh, funeral benefits. Um, and I really enjoy that position in that I got to speak to thousands and thousands. Uh, that's not an exaggeration of appellants who were appealing denials that they had gotten from their local offices um, regarding um, benefits that they were trying to, to apply for and, and receive. Um, and part of that time um, was during COVID. And so um, it was such an honor for me and um, for all of uh, my colleagues and all the other administrative law judges to be able to assist people during that time. Our focus was really on helping as many people as we could um, receive benefits um, or get them access to help. What are some changes that you think the judiciary needs? I think some changes the judiciary needs, something that I alluded to before is um, definitely we need more younger voices, more um, up and coming voices. We need more people of color um, on the bench and um, people such as myself. Um, not only am I Latina, um, but I'm also someone who cares. I'm someone who always makes it a point to connect with other people, um, to make people feel seen, to make people feel welcome. And I think that's an important key takeaway. Um, we need change. Um, being out in the campaign um, and in the community, I've heard from so many um, voters, especially people of color who feel like judges aren't nice people, who feel like judges can't make a change, um, who feel like judges are out of touch. Um, and a lot of that has to do with a lot of the increased media scrutiny and locally and nationally on judges. Um, and I really wanna be someone that changes that. I think it's really alarming that voters feel this way about the judiciary, especially when judges are such an important, um, we play such an important role and probably the most direct role that people will have in, um, contact with or their family members or their community members. So um, I think it's really important to vote in judges who really care about people, who are people of color, but who also really care about people and are willing to go the extra mile to make people feel heard and listen to people. And I think that was something I was thinking about that I think um, a lot of people think that judges are like the bad guy, right? Right. Uh, what are some misconceptions you think there are or people have about the work that judges do? Um, I think some common misconceptions people definitely have is that they'll never have to encounter a judge, which is not true. Um, you know, if anything, something even as minor as you might have a traffic accident or you might have an automobile accident um, or you might have a slip and fall or, you know, heaven forbid someone for from your community or your family might have a criminal case. Those are all types of cases that would come in front of a judge. Mm -hmm. And so that's why it's important to really Pay attention to who's running for judge and electing the right people. I think another misconception that people have is um, in different countries, it works different ways. In our country, we're unique um, and in our state in that um, it's very uncommon to leave um, things like elections of a judge of who gets to sit on a bench up to the citizens or the average voter. Um, it's much more common in other countries and, and in some other states. Um, for a group of other um, judges, for example, or of a group of your peers or your other fellow attorneys are the ones who control everything and are the ones who are um, putting judges in the positions that they are in. So I think that's a common mis misconception that people have is that people don't understand that you have agency and you have a right to um, have a say in this. There are There is a process in Illinois where another group of judges or a group of judges do um, vote on who can become something that we call associate judges. But for what I'm running for is a full circuit judge, um, which means that my name will be on all um, Cook County voter ballots. Um, and that's another way of becoming a judge and that's by popular vote or election. So whoever gets the most votes in my election, there's three of us running for the same position, uh, for the same slot. I'm the only Latina in my race. Um, whoever gets the most votes on the June 28th ballot will be the person who uh, moves on to the November um, election. Thank you for that, because I think that that's information that not everybody knows. Yes. Um, and you've been endorsed, endorsed by the Chicago Federation of Labor. What does that mean to you being the daughter and the wife of labor workers? It means so much to me. Um, I... I grew up, like you said, I grew up a child of, of a laborer. My father was um, a union boilermaker um, and 
he traveled a lot growing up, but he worked there for 32 years and he retired there. Um, and when he came to this country, he had some compadres that were union um, boiler makers, or he met other people who were in the area. And back then, um, thank goodness, getting a union job was a lot easier than it is now. They just told him, oh, we're looking for more people. Come by on Monday morning and come fill out an application. And back then it was as easy as that. And um, so I'm really proud of, of the Chicago Federation of Labor Endorsement um, in that um, being the child of a union laborer um, gave us a lot of opportunities in our lives. It gave my father the opportunity to provide for his family, for me and my sister and my mother. Um, my mother um, had gone to dental school in Mexico. Mm -hmm. And because of my father being a union laborer and being able to make in the income and the health insurance benefits, um, she was able to go back to school and finish dental school and um, practice here in the United States. Um, she's had a dental practice for about 30 or 40 years now in the South suburbs. So, um, and my husband's also a union iron worker. Again, that's also provided so much for our family and for our children, um, wonderful benefits, um, health insurance, and it will also provide for our children um, when they go away to college, they also have scholarship opportunities. So I'm really proud of the Chicago Federation of Labor endorsement. Um, they endorse um, candidates in each race, um, uh, in each judicial race. And I'm proud that I'm the person out of the three people in my race that has been endorsed by them. Um, they represent over 300 unions and over 500,000 laborers. So it's really a big deal to be endorsed by them. I was also endorsed last week by the Layuna the Laborers International Union of North America. Um, they're a union that represents um, Chicago laborers, such as construction workers, um, both within the city and outside of the city. So that was also a really big win for us in our campaign um, to receive that endorsement. And it's almost like a full, a full circle moment, right? Like yes. with your father, like that's really nice. Yes. Um, I did some research and it kind of surprised me the numbers I came across. So according to the National Association of Latino Elected Officials, Latinos make up less than 2% of all elected officials in the country. That's not a lot. <laughs> Why do you think that is? Um, I think it definitely has to do with uh, a lack of role models, lack of having role models um, in, in politics, in the political system. Um, for my experiences, for example, growing up in non-Latino neighborhoods, lack of um, having people that really encourage you or um, really take an interest in you. Um, I think it also has to do with having um, um, somewhat of uh, divisiveness sometimes, I think, in our political system and in politics. Um, I think sometimes people in these positions are pulled certain ways and they can only support certain candidates. And I've definitely experienced that myself on the campaign trail, um, either even from, and it's unfortunate, even from other Latino or Latina people in positions of power or candidates that, um, you know, have to align themselves with certain um, sectors or certain organizations. And so um, I think it's it has to do with one, not having enough role models in positions of power, but also um, as, as a community and as people of color, we have to do better in helping each other and taking an interest in mentoring one another and really um, lending a hand um, when, when we get to um, positions um, that, that we seek and that we're ascertaining. And really quickly, do you have any resources to share with our viewers and where can they go to learn a little bit more about your campaign? Sure. So to learn more about my campaign, you can go to www.silvahernandez, S-I-L-V-A-H-E-R-N-A-N-D-E-Z, there's no hyphen, for F-O-R, judge, J-U-D-G-E dot um, org. And as you stated at the beginning, that's uh, my website is completely bilingual. Um, I try to put up there all my endorsements, um, all my events, and there's a lot more about my background and uh, my upbringing on there. Uh, I also encourage everyone to really um, start re researching judicial candidates. Um, you know, you can definitely Google um, judicial candidates, Cook County, Illinois, and you can see and find lists of um, who the different candidates are. Um, being on the campaign trail really quickly, I've definitely run into two types of people when it comes to voting for judges. Um, there's one segment that just votes um, based on what gender they are, or does their name sound Latino, does their name sound like a person of color, or there's people who um, 
don't know who any of the judicial candidates are and completely skip over that section because they don't feel right about voting for someone that they don't know. Mm -hmm. um, you completely have enough time right now. Early voting doesn't start till June 13th in Cook County. Um, and the actual election day is June 28th. So I really encourage everyone to please research your judicial candidates. I have a Facebook page out there, Silva Hernandez for Judge. I also have Instagram, Silva Hernandez for Judge, and my website. Um, and all the other candidates, most of them are also have some type of social media or online presence. Um, please research your candidates. Please don't be of the segment that totally skips over that part. Um, and also please don't be of the segment also that, that votes based on gender or based on um, name. Um, I've had so many late nights, so many 1 a.m. Um, writing essays and personal statements and asking for endorsements and um, support. Um, so the candidates put so much work in, into these races, even though judicial candidates are not often heard of, we put so much work into this. I've spent so much time away from my children. I have a nine-year-old and a 10-year-old and sometimes they're like, oh, do you have to go to another event today? Or why aren't you home today? So um, I've put so much work into this. And so I really appreciate the time um, that your organization has given me. And um, I, all I ask is that people please put in the work. And like I said, there's plenty of time to still research candidates. So when you go into the voting booth, you have that power and you have that agency to vote for who you really believe in. Thank you so much. I agree. Research is so important. <laughs> thank you for talking with us and thank you for being our guest today, Claudia. Thank you. I really enjoyed it. Thank you so much. Join us next time for another episode. For more information about our discussion today, check out our web story on ilatinonews.com and follow us on Twitter at ilatinonews. I'm Annabelle Rocha with ILLN Opinion Plus. See you next time. Thank you.